Okay, so um, <clears throat> happy New Year's Eve, everyone. Happy New Year's Eve. We made it through 2023 by the help and the pleasure of the Lord. It was his pleasure. It pleased him to escort us through all of the days, all of the nights, through all of the ups and all of the downs. Ah, it pleased him mm -hmm, to do that. And so we only made it through because of his help and his pleasure. And so because of that, we give him glory. We give him glory for his goodness, for his loving kindness, for his faithfulness to us. Mm -mm -mm. We will have no complaints. We'll have no issues. We will have no regrets about um, anything. If the only thing we will do regarding 2023, um, where we, you know, if we need to address and if we need to regret, is that where we may have sinned against God. So in any area that we need to repent, oh, we, we will do that. We shall do that, okay? That is our reasonable service. So, so we're not going to leave a body, uh, a trail of blood behind us in 2023 and just try to wash our hands clean of something that we know we did not do, that God called us to do, okay? You know, no, regret that and, and redeem the time. Okay, address that and finish your course. If God gave you a word, God gave you a commandment, God gave you an assignment, if God gave you a responsibility, if God gave you a, a, a vision and you know that you didn't do it, that you shirked your responsibility or any of those things, no, you need to deal with that. That doesn't get left behind in 2023, beloved. That goes with you into 2024. And don't worry about it. God will give you compounded grace. Uh -huh. He'll compound the grace and make it where you're able to handle all of what 2024 has, plus finish what you needed to do in 2023. Okay, so don't worry about that. Deal with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But other than that, you know, we, we're going to just celebrate our victories um, grieve our losses, but we'll leave them behind in 2023. And we'll just give God the glory for his faithfulness to us. Amen. Amen. 2023, it was an amazing year. It was an amazing year of adventures with God and in God. There was great highs and there were some really deep lows for, for many of us. It's like Prophet Kivia had talked about. She's incurred a lot of loss, you know, buried loved ones and other types of losses. And not just her, you know, many of us have experienced deep lows, you know, um, losses of dreams where we may have thought that the move that we made was was right and was was at the right time um, and with the right people. But then when we got there, it was maybe something that we had not grown in strength and faith and ability to, you know, uh, uh, maintain or, you know, we may not have the character for whatever. And maybe we took some losses, you know, in that. But <clears throat> that's part of God's, you know, plan. And, and he's already got a plan in place to uh, repair uh, and recover and redirect us. So don't fret too much over any of the mistakes that you made, you know, any of the failures, anything like that. God, you still made it through. You made it through mainly by trusting in his word. He, you know, his his word is him. It's, it's, he can't be separated from it. So trusting in God and trusting in his word. Last year, the Lord gave us in 2023, he gave us a prophetic promise. Mm -hmm. He gave us a word to run on. The word that we ran on yesterday, uh, last yesteryear, which I guess it was yesteryear, um, 
He let us know that 2023 was the year of divinely appointed and anointed increase, oh, expansion, and elevation. Okay. That was our word. Okay. And surely, 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 uh, I believe we experienced all three. All three. Okay. We continue to increase, expand, and elevate all throughout the year. We did this individually and as a ministry. Just listening to each of your, you know, review and testimonies of some of the highlights of the things that you achieved in this past year. We see evidence. We see evidence of how our faith increased, our vision increased, our giving increased, our generosity increased, how our repentance increased, how our authority and power increased, experience increased in so many ways. And as it relates to expansion, oh man, God did not disappoint. Our spheres of influence and authority expanded as well. We individually and collectively as a body are now reaching people and touching lives, lives in many homes, in more homes than we ever had before, and in, in, in schools that we had never been in or had access to before. We are reaching people and touching lives in businesses and ministries in cities and states and countries in very tangible and practical ways. I just think about some of the things, that, but the two things I just want to mention as far as that goes is Wisdom Ministries had, you know, a, a Evangelist Sean had a vision from 10 years ago of wisdom going to Aruba, wisdom being in Aruba. And so this came to pass, but it was also God's goal for wisdom to impact to make an impact in some way. So we had a lot of fun, but we also had very uh, unique opportunities to speak into the lives of people, to celebrate God, um, to lift up the name of the Lord to, to, to waiters, to, to, to the person that was, you know, uh, uh, putting us in, in the, uh, whatever that ride is. And we went out on the water and almost killed our full selves. You know, we had a chance to, to spread the gospel and to magnify the name of the Lord, wisdom in Aruba. So we impacted Aruba, but really significantly being able to, to take a CEK ministries impact and influence into Kenya beyond just Pastor Robert. But now where we are feeding hope in Kenya, blessing lives in Noguru, Kenya. I'm looking forward to, to sharing the pictures and the videos that he sent from the um, from the extravaganza that they did in December. So we're effective. We're effective in God. He, he blessed us to increase and expand in 2023. But guess what? That wasn't the fullness of the word. The word also uh, included elevation, y'all, right? Let's not forget the elevation that took place in 2023. It was epic. It was super natural. Supernatural elevation. Supernatural is where God operates. Uh huh. Uh, you know. Uh, listen. We, I believe, the elevation that God brought us into shifted the balance of power between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The gates of hell did not prevail against the onslaught of CEK's elevation. The leaders in CEK advanced the kingdom of God 
and neutralized demonic powers and reclaimed stolen ground that was under the dominion of the evil one. When y'all stood up and gave God your yes, when y'all stood up, hallelujah, and you endured the process, you didn't turn back, uh -huh, you, you, you kept going and you received the next level of promotion, mm -hmm. we neutralized demonic powers in ways that you may not even be able to understand. <laughs> the church advanced against the gates of hell and they did not stand. They could not withstand our advancement. Oh, I know some of us we're a little, you know, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. If the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. God knows. God knows. We are his instruments in his hands. We are his weapons of warfare. We are part of God's armory and he raises us. We are his standard and he, we are the ones who will push back against the onslaught of the enemy. And CEK did that. The prophetic school graduated six prophetic ministers. That wasn't an easy feat. That school was over 18 months of intense study, um, practice, and, and, and discussion and activation. The uh, uh, And then also we had uh, people that received prophetic weapons and mantles. Prophetic weapons and mantles were released to a uh, six, six, apostolic uh, ministry leaders. I'm speaking specifically of the staffs that were released into the hands of people. And that largely had to do because of CEK's posture in God and what God is doing through CEK ministries, okay? Two leaders were elevated and ordained to the office of prophet of God. Come on now. And two more of our leaders were confirmed to their ministry function within the ministry as apostolic aid and membership care leaders. Also, we had leaders who were baptized into their next level of consecration and responsibility in the body. And so much, much more happened. We hear Dr. Johnson talking about her elevation, the things that God had released to her and many others, you know, Evangelist Sean, okay. her pursuits and her education and, and Prophet Kivia and even myself, Prophet Kivia, Elder Joanne and Evangelist Debrea being now in the master's and doctoral program at Deeper Bible College. God is growing us. CEK may be small in number, but not in power, authority, and impact. Impact. There is truly might in our might. I thank God that he, he sees, you know, people may discount the smallness of a thing, but God knows if there is might in that might. And C.E.K. has might in our numbers. So I give God the glory for that. I give God the glory. So listen, the Lord came through on his word to us as a body, to us individually, to me personally. Yeah? It was truly the year of divine fulfillment for me. And I give God the glory for that. And I thank all of you for doing your part and, and being faithful, dependable, diligent, reliable in the Lord and in the ministry with whatever we may have given to you to carry with us and to help us to move forward. I thank you for doing your part in making it where it was the year of divine fulfillment for me. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be sitting in the seat. Look. But God, through you, through your yes, through your devotion, through your commitment, blesses me. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm looking forward to the next phase of growth and development uh, for CEK Ministries in Christ, in the body of Christ. How about you? How about you? Are you looking forward to it? I pray you are. I pray you are. Okay, so listen, let's get, let's, 
Let's look at 2024. First, I must at least mention that uh, today is, uh, I'm not going to do, where's my, there we go. We don't have time. And it's not my job to give you everything and to feed you everything. But I do want to just mention that today on the, in the Hebrew calendar, on the Hebrew calendar is the 18th of Tevet. Okay, the 18th of Tevet. Mm -hmm. Tevet, month of Tevet in, on the Hebrew calendar crosses from December on into January. There's much to be said about Tevet, but I'm just going to lift up a couple of nuggets. First and foremost, we understand that there's 12 tribes, there's 12 months. So the way God has arranged everything is for each each month, a tr it also represents a tribe and a tribe represents a month in God's timing, okay? In the seasons that God has for us to live and to be able to discern the time that we're in, in the spirit. And though we understand that it's always seed time and harvest and though we understand that God is not bound to the seasons, but he gives us the seasons for us to... I, I believe that it's more so for us to know the optimal time to do things, but it doesn't mean that we can't do a thing if it's out of season. But in, if you do it when it's in season, it's something that's easier. You know, it's you, you don't have to work as hard because it is the season for it. You know, like if you're going to plant and it's the season to plant, the ground is moist. It's it's ready to be, uh, you know, uh, planted. You don't have to work so hard breaking it up because it's frozen or something like that. So God, he can... You know, he does whatever he wants, but we still want to at least understand the season we're in, right? So the tribe that is associated with uh, the month of Tibet, this is the 18th of Tibet, the tribe is the tribe of Dan, Dan, okay? And so when you look at what the tribe means and the name uh, this month, if you just look at those uh you know, the understanding of, of the name and the tribe, this is the month to judge, grow up, and mature. <laughs> so when we judge, let's judge righteously. Let's judge rightly. And when I really think about this, when I got the revelation of judging just from the scripture, uh, I can't, y'all forgive me, okay? I don't know if it's, I can't remember if it's 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. I think it may be 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where Paul talks about, and he gives the instruction for communion. And he talks about how we are weak in body, that we, that many of us are asleep and stuff, <clears throat> falling asleep because we don't judge ourselves correctly. And we don't, we don't discern the Lord's body. We don't judge ourselves correctly. So I need you, you know, to understand that this judgment is not about gloom and doom. And it's not about condemnation. It's about judging ourselves according, if we are believers, judging ourselves according to who we are in our identity in Christ. Okay. And so this is the month to judge. All right. So, so don't give yourself any excuses. Don't make excuses for sin and bad attitudes and those things. But what is the way to overcome it? The way to overcome it is by coming out of agreement with that, coming out of that attitude and that thought and, and, and imposing on the truth according to the word of God about who he says we are. Okay, I am. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're not a a sinner and a dirty dog and a wretch undone. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to judge yourself according to the Word of God. But you got to see. You got to look at things rightly. So 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 look at things rightly, and where you see that there is a a um an infirmity, an iniquity, a bad habit, a bad attitude, a character flaw, anything that is getting in the way of you uh, a being who God has called you to be in Christ, then you need to judge that. You need to condemn that, okay? But don't just leave yourself condemned. 
you call yourself out of that, condemn that behavior, but and call yourself into the righteous behavior of God by speaking who you are according to the word of God. So this is that month. We want to cross over into 2024, the vessels that God's called us to be, okay? That's how we want to cross over. This is the month to judge, grow up, and mature. Dan was the fifth son of Jacob and the first son of Rachel by her maid, Bilhah. His name means to rule, to judge, to execute judgment. So um, a couple of things here is pay attention to the prophetic words over your life so you do not miss your destiny. Uh-huh. Be willing to war when God calls you and stand for your inheritance and don't back down. Mm -hmm. Ask God how to form a rear guard over the past season. And finally, step on the serpent's head this month. Those are four prophetic words that I pull out from our Hebrew calendar resources that we've used and looked at for, for years. Okay, I just wanted to put that out there. But it's your job to go further, to seek that for yourself. Now let's let's shift on over into what this looks like on our Gregorian calendar. Today's date is 123. <clears throat> 123123. <clears throat> I need you to look at that date and remove the dashes between the 12, the 31, and the 23. Remove the forward slashes. And, and just put a dash between the three and the one. What do you see? You see one, two, three, one, two, three. That's the date. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, just like signifies the, the rhythm of a dance, the rhythm of a waltz, the rhythm of movement and music in God. One, two, three, one, two, three. I need you to understand that these kind of numerical dates that mirror like that, one, two, three, one, two, three, is a pattern and it mirrors. These kind of numerical dates, they only happen once every 100 years. The next time that we will see this pattern of one, two, three, one, two, three will not be, uh, it'll be in the year uh, it'll be uh, December 31st, 2123. That'll be the next time we will see. So I believe that one, two, three, <laughs> when I was looking at that, I said, oh, wow, God, thank you. I'm going to say that for us, for our words today, one, two, three represents the words or the three words. We have one, two, three words that we will receive today. Mm -hmm. OK, you may be asking, what are you talking about? Three words, three words. I'm going to tell you. We elevated and ordained by the direction of God to prophets in the ministry of CEK in June. Prophet Markeva Moore, Prophet Kevia Moore, I mean, Prophet Kevia Woods. So now we have three prophets. Hallelujah in our ministry. And I do not take that lightly. I thank God for that. And there's, I believe there's really, uh, I'm not going to say there's nothing worse, but I believe that it is, uh, we do an injustice when we have fivefold gifts and we don't not just activate, but we don't operate them. We don't operate in them. We don't recognize their role and their authority in the body of Christ. So normally, you know, I would seek God for a word and I would minister a word for the year. But I have met with the prophets. We have a prophetic council now, y'all. Okay. C-E-K has a prophetic council. C-O-N-C-I-L. C-O-U-N-C-I-L. Council. All right. So they meet 
they see God. They discuss what they're hearing in the spirit. They pray. And I've had the honor of being able to meet with them as well. And God gave me, um, had asked me to, um, I gave them the assignment as led by God for them to seek God for the word for the year of what we should run on. What is God saying for 2024? And um, and for them to submit those words to me, not for them to, to sit here now and minister them individually, but for them to seek God as the prophetic counsel, to hear from God individually, to release to me what the Lord is saying. And then from there, I would take their words um, and of course, be an apostle and teacher, you know, seek God, you know, on the instructions, on the wisdom, on the direction with it. So that is what I am going to minister to you today. I'm going to share with you the three words that have been released through the three prophets. And, um, and I will expound on them and give you what the Lord is saying. How do y'all feel about that? I hope that blesses you. I thank God for this. I thank God for this. All right, all right, all right. So the first word, Prophet Markeva Moore, okay? Um, this is what she sent to me verbatim. I'm going to read to you the word she released, and we will go from there. This is what she said. New, new, new. I will make everything new. I, the Lord, will perfect that very thing that concerns you. New promotions, new territory, new levels, new mantles, new positions, new documented healings, more miracles, more breakthroughs. This new wave of glory will require strict obedience. You must do what I say. New strategies for healings shall be revealed, but it will require diet changes. Listen for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Posture yourself in prayer. The scripture references are Isaiah 43, 19, Psalms 138, verse 8, Deuteronomy chapter 28, and 3 John chapter 1, verse 2. So that is the word that Prophet Markeva said. So let's look at this word. Mm, mm, mm. She said that the Lord has said, I will make everything new. I, the Lord, will perfect that very thing that concerns you. New promotion. New promotion. Promotion is exaltation in rank or honor. Promotion is described as another step closer to God's call on your life. True promotion is moving closer and closer to God's call on your life. God promotes you. You are another step, or when God promotes you, rather, you are another step closer to his best for your life. That's promotion. New territory. In the Bible, territory is understood as power gained by increased authority responsibility, 
and influence. New levels. A level is a position on a scale of amount, quantity, extent, or quality. New mantles. The mantle is the believer's unique and personal anointing, gifts, or grace given by the Father to cover them as in a blanket or a coat. New positions. Position is a place where someone or something is located, has been placed or arranged. Here, specifically in the body of Christ. New healings. Mm -hmm. Healing is being made whole and restored spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. More miracles. God, I thank you. Miracles. Mm, these are those astonishing supernatural events attributed to the presence and divine actions of God. And then more breakthroughs. The Hebrew word for breakthrough means this. I love this. It is a gap, a break, a rupture, a tear. Breakthrough is a breaking up or shattering of something. It is a breach. So the Lord is saying, it is that <laughs> in this instance, it is that supernatural power that creates a break in the wall of an enemy. God is saying, ah, more breakthroughs, more supernatural power to create a break in the wall of an enemy. New waves of glory. New waves of glory. Okay, this is good. New waves of glory will require strict obedience. Let's define the word wave. Wave is the spreading of disturbances. The spreading of disturbances from place to place in a regular and organized way. The spreading of something such as a belief, the spreading of, 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 of a belief abroad or into new regions. What is glory? When we're talking about glory here, it's talking about fame. We're talking about God's fame, God's renown, God's greatness, God's honor, God's manifold perfections in his greatness. So when, when the Lord gives her this word to say about the, the new waves of glory, what does this mean in a nutshell when we take the two definitions and marry them together? Well, I believe it is the spreading of new atmospheric disturbances in the world's spiritual systems will be achieved by releasing the fame, renown, greatness, and honor of God's manifold perfections in his greatness in a regular and organized way. But this will require strict obedience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, for 2024, he wants to use his body and he wants to use those who are a part of his body individually and collectively to, to be, to bring, to be that new wave of glory. Mm -hmm. To come in and to spread, uh, to be responsible for the spreading of new atmospheric disturbances in the world's spiritual systems. Mm -hmm. How? By releasing, speaking, declaring, exemplifying the fame, renown, greatness, and honor of God's manifold perfections in his greatness. And not to do this once in a while, but make this a lifestyle. The, the, 
this to be done in a regular and even in an organized way. But the only way it could be done, it will require strict obedience. And so the four passages of scripture that the Lord gave to prophet Markiva to help us walk out this word in the right posture of prayer and expectation is Isaiah 43. Let's look at verses 18 through 20. It reads, so don't remember. Now I'm not reading the King James. This is the, the ERV version. So don't remember what happened in earlier times. Don't think about what happened a long time ago because I am doing something new. Now you will grow like a new plant. Surely you know this is true. I will even make a road in the desert and rivers will flow through that dry land. The wild animals will thank me. The large animals and birds will honor me when I put water in the desert and make rivers flow through that dry land. I will do this to give water to my chosen people. I like how the message says, of the people I made especially for myself, a people custom made to praise me. Mm -hmm. The next scripture, Psalm 138, verse 8, the ISV says, the Lord will complete what his purpose is for me. Lord, your gracious love is eternal. Do not abandon your personal work in me. In other words, the psalmist is saying, the Lord's, th this is 2024. This is what he's done always. This is what he'll continue to do. But this is what we can stand on. This is what we can rely on. This is what we can confess. In 2024, the Lord stands with us to do what he has promised. He will treat us with kindness for our sake. He will avenge us and will work out his plans for us. He is with us to the end and will show that we are right to trust him, ah, that he will do this for our sake. Lord, the psalmist said at the end of that, Lord, do not give up on us. Do not quit us. Do not abandon us. The work of your own hand. Mm. He will complete that. He will perfect that which concerns us. He will complete what his purpose is for me, what his purpose is for you. And then 3 John, verse 1 and 2, the New King James says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. So the apostle is expressing his deep desire for them, saying, Listen, I know that it is well with your soul and you are doing well spiritually. So I pray everything else is going well in respect with you and that you are enjoying good health. It's not enough for us to have spiritual joy and, and spiritual strength and all these things and us being broke down, busted and disgusted and, and, and just run over in all the er other areas of our life, including our physical health. And then Deuteronomy 28, we understand that it, and we're not going to read the whole chapter, but we do understand that, that this chapter outlines the blessing on obedience. Because remember, the Lord said, all these things I, I promised, the new promotions and the, the, all of these things. Listen, the only way it's going to happen is going to require strict obedience. And so Deuteronomy 28, it outlines the blessing that rests on obedience, telling us that if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all the blessing pronounced on the seed of Abraham shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. That's the word that prophet Markiva sent us from the Lord. And that's uh, the instructions, the, the enlightenment of it, as the Lord gave me to share with you. The next word we want to look at is was released uh, through Prophet Kivia 
Woods. The scripture for this is Matthew chapter 25, verse 10. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. <laughs> the prophetic word that the Lord gave her, she says, gone are the days of old, of shortchanging God. The tools of old do not work anymore. As it was with the 10 virgins, five had extra oil and five did not. This is not acceptable for his body. The oil is not an option, but it is a requirement. The oil and the extra oil are mandatory in all things moving forward. That is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> so, when you look at this scripture and you see, you know, it talks about the lamps and it talks about the vessels that the five virgins that had the extra oil, they carried vessels with them of extra oil along with the lamp that already had the oil in it and that was burning, they had an extra supply. So the lamp is said to represent the faith of the believer, okay? This is the faith that's at work. This is the faith that's working the lamp. It's lit, it's working, it's full, okay? It's shining bright, okay? It's, it's making evident, all right, of the presence of, of God in, in the person's life. The lamp represents the faith of the believer. The oil, okay, which is our anointing, represents the good work that is produced as a result, as evidence of our devotion and active faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That's what the that's what this extra oil in this vessel represents. The devotion, the commitment the expectation, the action of our faith. Mm -hmm. The scripture tells us that the foolish bridesmaids took their lamps, but they didn't take any extra oil. The wise bridesmaids, however, took along extra oil for their lamps. <laughs> extra, ooh. Mm, extra oil for their faith. If the best need, the best, the best, we're talking about that, that best, that what God would consider that, that best Christian, the one who, who follows him devoutly, okay? Uh, the one who, who's taking serious, if, if the best, which would be the wise bridesmaid, if the best need more from Christ, to remain steadfast, immovable, abounding in fruit, and prepared when he calls them home, as is represented in the extra oil, them needing more, them recognizing that what's in the lamp ain't going to be enough. I got to have, I got to have an, un, uh, an unlimited supply here. If the best need more from Christ to remain steadfast, immovable, abounding in fruit and prepared when he calls them home because that's what it's that's what's referring to, okay? Being called home with the Lord. How much more does the soul who has neglected the anointing of his faith because this, this oil is representing the anointing. The lamp is the faith. So the faith, yes, the faith is, is a spirit, is a gift, a spiritual gift from God. 
but we see people all the time operating in gifts with, with no anointing, right? So how much more does the soul who has neglected the anointing of his faith need this extra oil, need the anointing? As the Lord has spoken through the prophet <laughs> to warn us all, let us take heed to what God is saying. Those who have been disobedient, rebellious, or negligent to the word and leading of God in, in your life, now is the time to repent. Stop shortchanging God. Those who have been diligent to do what the Lord has commanded you to do, don't grow weary or discouraged and start thinking of ways to, to cut back or, or to shrink back or to turn around <laughs> or as Prophet <laughs> Kiva said, to renege because it's getting difficult. Don't start shortchanging God. You haven't shortchanged him so far. Don't start considering how you can shortchange God. For you don't know the day or the hour that he's going to require your soul from you. You don't want to go up to him a dry place. A dry and dreary and withered place. You want to be well oiled. Okay. I like how Matthew Henry, I was reading through Matthew Henry. So I'm going I'm to read to you. I paraphrase it. I change the words to make it more, you know, more modern. But I'm going to read a little snippet about what Matthew Henry said regarding this passage of scripture. And then we're going to get on to what Prophet Jerry shared with us. Matthew Henry, a paraphrase, he says, those who don't care how they live still want to die the death of the righteous. Woo, right there to me, that, that, that right there is just, that right there just preaches all by itself. We see it all the time. People that deny God, people that don't think that it take all that, people that say they love the Lord or whatever, but then they don't do nothing of what God says to do. They sit and they make all kinds of reasons why they just can't seem to do it or they don't feel like it's really that important and just don't take all that. So those who don't care how they live for God, live in God, live in this world, still seem to want to die the death of the righteous. But those that desire to be saved must have grace or oil of their own. We can't wait to buy oil when we should be burning oil. We, we shouldn't be seeking grace at the time when we need it. Like when you're standing before God, you can't be now seeking grace. We seek grace now. <laughs> we buy the oil now. Okay. He, he said we should already have it. Those and only those who shall go to heaven hereafter are they that are made ready for heaven here. The suddenness of death and of Christ coming to us in that moment, in that moment of death, woo, if you've been ready for, made ready for heaven here, the suddenness of death will not hold back our eternal happiness. That's if we have been prepared for death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Death is represented when he says the door being shut. Mm -hmm. The door being shut, that, that's death. The unexpected summons of death may alarm the Christian, but because he continually trims his lamp and buys oil, his graces in that moment, his diligent work of gathering unto himself the grace of God diligently 
His grace is in that moment shines more bright. While the mere professor's conduct and neglect shows that his lamp is going out. Watch, therefore, attend to the business of your souls. Remain in the fear and expectation of the Lord all the day long. Remember the word from Prophet Mark, Prophet Kibia. Gone are the days of old of shortchanging God. The tools of old do not work anymore. This is not acceptable for his body. The oil is not an option, uh huh. but it is a requirement in 2024 and beyond. The oil and the extra oil are mandatory in all things moving forward. And finally, our word from Prophet Jerry. Prophet Jerry Isaac. <laughs> He's so funny. When I asked him for words, he sent me two words. Oh, he have to give his he'll have to give his his side of the story. He sent me two words: expectation and anticipation. So, of course, you know, I had to talk to him about it because I needed more. I needed more understanding so that I would be able to release the word in a way where, you know, so I had to, 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 to talk with the man of God and he shared with me what God was showing him. The scripture is 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 22 through 24. I will be reading from the CEB version complete English Bible or contemporary English Bible. Then Samuel said, <clears throat> does the Lord want entirely burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as obedience to the Lord? I like how this, that verse in is, is read in the Dewey Reigns. It says, doth the Lord desire holocausts and victims and not rather that the voice of the Lord should be obeyed. <laughs> I just feel like so that word is just so much stronger in, in its uh, illustration of what he's saying, these burnt offerings and sacrifices. Listen to this. The CEB goes on. Obeying is better than sacrificing. Paying attention is better than fat from rams because rebellion is as bad as the sin of divination. Arrogance is like the evil of idolatry because you have rejected what the Lord said. He has rejected you as king. Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned because I disobeyed the Lord's command and your instructions. Uh -huh. I was afraid of the troops and obeyed them. So out of his own, you know, out of his own um, confession, he recognized that he, he disobeyed the Lord and he disobeyed the leader that the Lord had given him to lead him into the way that the Lord wanted him to go. And plus two, he said, I was afraid of the troops and obeyed them. Mm -hmm. So Prophet Jerry spoke this after, you know, in, in the conversation when I asked him. Uh-huh. Saul had an expectation to achieve his assignment, but he got blindsided by his disobedience and lust for trinkets of approval from people. To be able, this is still Prophet Jerry, to be able to have confident expectations 
and anticipation that God will release the blessing we have trusted and believed to receive, we must obediently follow God under the authority of the leadership he has given to lead us into the expectation. We must understand the principle of reciprocity for what God will release when we are under the authority of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. There's another part to his word, but before we get there, I want to talk about this word expectation and anticipation. Expectation is a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. Uh, it is a belief that someone will or should achieve something. And it is uh, um, the belief that something will or the feeling that something will or should happen in the future. But you know what? There's also a definition for expectation, which is called or, or termed as archaic. So usually when you're talking about an archaic definition, it's speaking to how the word used to be used originally before over time it started to shift in its use. Do you know what it says for the definition of the archaic use of expectation? It simply says one's prospects of inheritance, one's prospects of inheritance. So to be able to have confident prospects of inheritance uh, that, that God will release the blessing that we have trusted and believed to receive, we must obediently follow God under the authority of the leadership he has given to us to lead us into the inheritance. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Inheritance. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay, so I have put on the side here prospects of inheritance um, in parentheses here, one's likelihood, because I wanted to see, okay, what does this prospect mean? It's one's likelihood of receiving, one's uh, opportunity, one's chance to receive. And then an inheritance is an irrevocable gift based on one's relationship with the benefactor. Your inheritance is based on your relationship with the benefactor. How is your relationship with God? I think people get it, but they don't understand what's being asked when they're asking about their relationship. If somebody asks, how's your relationship with your mom or your dad or your husband or your wife, then, then it's easy to kind of narrow it. It's like, okay, well, right now it's not so good. Or it's really good. You know, we talk a lot. We we go out to dinner. We have a lot of fun. You know, there's we the, we're very forgiving. And you can like tangibly think, you know, practically think of the ways that y'all interact and give to one another. But we don't think that way when it comes down to God. We're just always the receiver. It's just always about us. We don't think about what it is that, He's asking for, okay, or what he needs, or, you know, we don't think about what we bring to him, what we give to him, the difference we make to him and for him, how we console him, how we please him, how we bring him joy, how we serve, you know, we just more so think about our relationship with him like a slave servant kind of mentality, how we do a work for him, because that's oftentimes how. It's usually uh, ministered, you know, always talking about your work or your calling God or how you serve God. But uh, how do you make God feel? What about that? How do you make, how do you make him feel? So expectation. Mm -hmm. What is your hope and your expectation? for 2024, any other time beyond that. What is it that you hope to find? 
what is it that you hope to achieve? What is it that maybe you hope to be returned to you? You know, what do you hope to gain or inherit from God? Mm -hmm. The man of God said that the Lord says to be able to have confident expectations, to have a good hope <laughs> in anticipation that God will release the inheritance to you. Uh huh. You're going to have to open. Obediently follow God under the authority of the leadership, the godly leadership he has given you, given to, to lead you into that expectation. <laughs> Anticipation, okay? The act of anticipating, taking up, placing, or considering something beforehand mm -hmm. or before the proper time in natural order. So there's a time for things to be released, a time for things to be done. So anticipation is the act of anticipating, okay? So so let's look at this. <clears throat> to anticipate, I, I was all over. I was looking at, I was looking. To anticipate is to be driven by the Spirit of God. To be driven by the Spirit of God. It is to foresee and act in advance to what is being brought to your attention. Anticipation is about expectation. It means that we look ahead to what is coming and believe with certainty it will happen. Anticipation is about preparing and making room for what you know is yours by faith. It is getting ready for what God has told you is coming. And finally, anticipation. It is the feeling of excitement. The feeling of excitement that you have about what you are in expectation of, okay? It's the, uh, the feeling of excitement about what you hope for. The key to having excitement, okay, as the feeling in your anticipation instead of dread in your feeling, because there's sometimes we anticipate, but it's not, we ain't excited. We're like, oh my God, you know, we know, especially when we were growing up, it's like, oh, I'm gonna tell your daddy when he gets home, he gonna, you know, <laughs> you don't anticipate dad coming home and, you know, getting that spanking. So that's not a feeling of excitement. So there's anticipation that can be negative. But the key to having excitement as your feeling instead of dread is participation. Mm-hmm. You can't have no expectation without participation. You keep sitting there. Keep thinking about it. Keep talking about it. Keep praying about it and doing nothing about it. Not participating at all and see what you get. You can anticipate with excitement about the year to come, about what God is uh, uh, going to do. Uh, you can anticipate with excitement the fulfillment of your expectation when you have done your part, when you have fully obeyed the word of the Lord on your life, not partially, partial obedience and still disobedience as far as God is concerned. But you can anticipate with excitement when you have fully obeyed the word of the Lord on your life. Expectation anticipation, and I want to add another word, faith. Expectation, anticipation, faith. It means to abandon your own ideas of what could and should happen. Because guess what? They are too small. They are too small. Instead, seek God. Listen. 
and trust in what he says and expect that. Get excited about that. Anticipate that and cultivate faith for that. Mm -hmm. Abandon your ideas about it because they're too small. And the second thing that Prophet said, or a continuation, um, but I, I wanted, because I, I felt like they were separate. I love this word, y'all. I said, Dr. Johnson, gonna, she gonna love this one right here. What you need will be brought to you. And what you want, you will have to go get. Mm -hmm. This will require faith. I'm going to say it again because there's a little bit more I'm going to add to it. What we, what you need will be brought to you. That's the word, the word of God tells us. The Lord will supply all of our needs. Okay. What you need will be brought to you. Huh? But what you want, you'll have to go get. And this will require faith. Both will require faith. We will, he said, he went further to say, and finally he says, we will have to walk by faith. So in 2024, don't forget your blindfold. Mm -hmm. Don't forget your blindfold. So the word of wisdom I have for you regarding these prophetic promises is... <clears throat> For you to know and remember that the new God has planned for you is for the purpose of benevolence. It's for the purpose of to help and aid others, not to be neglected, not to be used selfishly or for personal gain. That word new, 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 new mantles, new promotions, new, 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 new. Don't make it about you. It's bigger than you. It's much bigger than you. Guess what? You will receive. You will receive the blessing of new. You will receive the blessing in your house, but you'll receive it beyond measure. If you are obedient to his word, this is not about you. It is about, it is for the purpose of benevolence to help and aid others. Okay. The extra oil that God requires you to keep, now that is about you. <laughs> that, that's for you, boo. That is for you. Don't you didn't see the wise virgins giving nobody they oh that was for them okay so don't don't make people feel like you're supposed to give your supply I'm a firm believer that we are to stay full okay just like these these lamps these 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 lamps they were full we must be on full of with God okay and then we 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 minister we give from our overflow, just like even with, uh, you know, tithing and stuff. God says you give on your increase, you tithe on your, your increase. Okay. So here, this is about, we, we give and we serve through our abundance. Ah, now there is, there is, you know, the, the message of, the, the, the widow with the two mites, how she gave out of her poverty. But if you stay in that mindset, you will stay in poverty. <laughs> she didn't let her poverty prevent her from giving to God the honor that is due him. But God wants to build us to the point where we are serving and living as the wise virgins where we are filled to the overflow where then we have that extra, that extra, that extra, that extra, okay, to the point where we can then bless others. But here, specifically in this word that Prophet Kivya gave, 
<laughs> you will receive, okay, the extra oil God requires you to keep is for you. And it is to ensure your eternal joy. And as leaders, mm -hmm, we must remember King Saul. This isn't about, uh, when we look at King Saul's story and what prophet gave us, this isn't about, you know, helping others, like with prophet Markiva's word. And this isn't about our, your eternal destiny, as with prophet Kivia's word. But when we look at King Saul, I believe that this is about your eternal legacy in the kingdom of God. It's about what you will establish in the earth, how long it will last, whether it will be pleasing to God and preserved by his power and approval. It is about how you will be remembered on earth and rewarded in heaven. So when I look at these three words, the theme that I think we can all clearly see running through all three words and tying them together in harmony. The theme is obedience. <laughs> obedience. Obedience is the key that unlocks and activates the prophetic promises given to us through the prophets for 2024. Obedience is the key. So the prophetic uh, a word that you're going to see, you know, uh, on our website, on our Facebook page, when I change it out for 2024, it's going to read something like this. 2024 is the year we expect, anticipate, and have faith that the Lord will perfect everything concerning us and will make all things new. We believe what we need will be brought to us. What we want, we have faith to go get. And our faith works with blindfolds on. We decree and declare we will not shortchange God. We will keep our wicks trimmed and extra oil for our lamps. For our bridegroom cometh. 2024. The year of expectation, anticipation, and faith. Glory be to God. I don't know about y'all, but I hope y'all are excited about that word. Hallelujah. That's our word for 2024. Praise God. Come on through here. Come on through here. Let me hear quickly from each of you all. Hallelujah. Let me hear quickly from each of you all about this word for 2024, hallelujah. And then I'm gonna close this out in prayer. I'm afraid of word that we receive. Come on, Doc. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I receive it all, Lord. That was fire. I'm gonna go back and listen. I was trying to take notes. I was getting it all down. I'm telling you, that is, that is, that is so much fire in, I believe that we are equipped, just like I was saying, like what God is speaking is like we are, it's, it's equipping us and empowering us to, to lay hold of everything. So I wrote those three words down as the outcomes and our results of, of, um, for benevolence and, and that, that oil for, for me personally, to stay to stay full to the overflow is not only required, um, but the extra <laughs> is required. <laughs> okay, the overflow, Hallelujah, that is going to uh, bring us into into possess the new to establish legacy in the promised land. <laughs> in the promised land to establish that legacy. So that's kind of, you know, I love, I love how you pulled everything together, Apostle, 
you are so anointed for this. You are, I mean, and, and this is a template for what other apostles should be doing and how they can utilize their, their prophetic counsel in their church or even to establish a prophetic counsel. I mean, you know, this is like what I see, you know, mm -hmm. it's even, you know, really building out a class for apostles and how to tap into that gift and then uh, be able to speak that word and release that word according to what God gives you to, you know, to, to really bring it all together to, to feed the people and to lead the people. God bless you. I mean, that's just, I mean, it's, it's above excellent of what God is doing in, in the anointing that is all over this. So I bless God and I'm looking, I'm looking for some more tonight. So I, you ain't said nothing about it, but I'm going to be there. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Thank I'm you, Dr. Johnson. With, with, with jingle bells on. Okay. Yes. I'm so grateful you're going to be in the house yes. with me tonight. So you are, <laughs> you are anointed uh, prophet, prophet Mark Moore, prophet Kivia, prophet Jerry to go. be the glory for laboring for laying before the lord see that which god has given unto you thank you so much for your obedience <laughs> because your obedience is what is going to uh steer up our obedience steering up our faith and building us up in edifying us hallelujah and admonishing us prophet kivia admonishing us you know exactly what prophets are supposed to do and prophet Jerry, all of what, um, all of what God has released through you, you know, thank you so much for all that, um, that God has given in and through his vessels. It, it, I, I mean, it just has my fire. Like it has my soul, like on fire, like literally I knew it was. I mean, I that, I knew it that was. shut up in your bones. I mean, it's like, woo. <laughs> so praise God. praise God. I just look forward to um to the to the next to the next for everybody, that next dimension for everybody. Um blessings and peace. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Yay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory be to God. Come on through here, Elder Jojo. Thank you so much, Doc Johnson. Come I am on, Elder. telling you, I am telling you, I am telling you, it is so exhilarating. I mean, I feel as if my whole, every cell in my body, hallelujah, mm. received that anointing. Every cell in my body down to the very core of my existence is being renewed. In October, I went to a, a, a service, praise God. And the service, it was, ooh, we had a, a thunderstorm and I waded through the water to get there, praise God. And when I got there, or the prophet that was there, she told me everything's going to be new, you know? And then here come my prophet. Here come my apostle. Here come, and here come my three prophets. Hallelujah. <laughs> three. God gave us three, not one, but three. Praise God. And I thank and praise God. Hallelujah. I'm excited also about what God is doing. I received that word. I mean, I received that word into my, my very my heart, my mind, my soul, and my spirit to do, be obedient to the word of God. I'm telling you, because I want the, I want everything God has. I want everything that he's given us. And he's given us so much to our apostles, to our prophets, through the prayers and, and just the, 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 I don't know, just the uh, very atmosphere that we live in. Even when we come on this, this call, we just, the atmosphere changes everything changes i mean if i thought something wrong before i came on that's what i can't think it no more you know so i just thank and praise god for how god is just moving and i have to do the same thing listen to that prophetic word and get a book just for that service just for that service i want nothing no other book no other pages just for that sir for today's service but right here but this is awesome this is so awesome. This is so, if I'm, if I don't catch it, if I don't run with it, if I don't if embrace it, hallelujah, then, then who's, what is wrong with me? 
What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? When God has supplied everything, absolutely everything, I thank God. That word, oh my God, mm, God bless you. God bless you, prophets. God bless you, apostle. God bless everyone on this line and everyone that's even on Facebook. My God, hear the word of the God. It's a decree. It's a de the king has spoken. The king has spoken. Lord. Glory be to God. He has spoken through his prophets. Hey, thank you, Father. Anyone else? Anyone else want to share? Anyone else want to share? We know this is a this is a you know, this is a very important day. So we want to give you opportunity. Evangelist to Brea. Those who have ears up to hear what the Spirit is saying into the church. And the church has spoken. Lord, I thank you. I praise you, my God. Um, you know, when God speaks to you, you know, in your personal prayer life and he shows you things. And you don't put it on the shelf. You just say, Lord, I receive it. This was like fresh order. You shut up. I see. Coming straight from heaven. And the thing was, it was like, it's in your obedience. It's in your obedience. You know, get step out. Get step out. And even with having three prophets in my life, I thought about it. It was like the three wise men was going to the to to see Jesus when he was born. I said, I got three of them, you know, and I said, an apostle. This is such a gift. This is truly a gift because there are so many buildings, church, uh, quote unquote, that does not have the gifts mm -hmm. working actively. They're coming together. They're coming together in the holiness of God to bring a word that we can walk we can go back and refer it with the scriptures. We can guess like Elder Joanne said, you know, guess I have a book. Guess what? Guess this alone. Because this was so much. This is something I'm going to put it somewhere where I can go back and just replay it where I don't have to look, listen, look for it. Because it was so much information. Mm -hmm. So much information. And every part needs to be cared for it needs to be nurtured god is going to feed it but we have to get it into our spirit it's going to be like that sponge and just soak it in don't wring it out don't wring you know sponges no don't wring this out just so they come in i mean it was like fresh manna from on high a uh, 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 prophet mckevia and prophet jerry and prophet kevia uh, i mean markeva and kevia i'm sorry god bless you God bless you. May the anointing of the prophets mm. come upon your lives. Let an outpour come upon your lives. Let the sh shadows, let the rivers, let the fountains just overflow through each and every member of your body. Your eyes are focused. Your ears are open. To thus says the Lord, and to Apostle Marguerite, my God, your teaching ability, your leadership ability, my God, you break down the words, you separate it, you spend so much time, you so much care for your people, for God's people, so much love, and I thank God for it. It is such a blessing, a blessing that you can't put words to, a blessing that you can put a dollar amount to, because when I look back, I am so grateful. And I thank God where he showed me where I'm coming up short at. But see, he didn't come up short like, no. He says, okay, you need this, you need that. And I thank God, that's how much he loves us. Because he doesn't want us to just slide in or slip in. He wants us the very best here on earth. So when we come to him, his arms have been waiting for you to come back to me. Yeah, come back sister. to me. His loving arms is wrapped around us. And I thank God for this. God bless each and every one of you. You, oh, each of us, all of us, is precious in his sight. And like you said, just be obedient. If you're willing and obedient, willing and obedient, trust in him. For he is our hope of righteousness and he is our glory. God bless each and every one. Amen. Glory be to God. If we're willing and obedient, Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Come on through here, Evangelist Leslie, woman of God. Oh, God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you all for that word. Um, blessings and peace upon all of y'all. Thank y'all for y'all prayers and 
Everything I just um man uh when you receive a prophet, name a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. We know that the reward of a prophet is insight, direction, and and prosperity. So I pray um for all of us to be able to receive the rewards of each and every so we got three trifle trifle reward oh my god i mean can you think about it like one prophet can just come and you receive insight direction prosperity but then you get three a triple one two three one two three that's what i it is right one two three 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 one, two, three. Hmm. Yep. In the sequence of insight, the sequence of direction, and sequence of prosperity that has been poured out to us. Listen, let us not let us not take it simple. Listen, do you understand? I mean, if you if we've truly understood, <laughs> like this is like you know. Jesus taking up those, just those select few to hear. Of course, yeah, it's on Facebook, yeah, and everything like that. But I'm just needing us that's in this Zoom room to truly understand the volume of what has been poured upon us to go into 2024 with the expectation of mm -hmm. newness, but. I, what really stood out, because, you know, people get excited, oh, you hear new, oh, they get excited about new, they get excited about the expectation, but the extra, the extra, the extra, you know, the extra, some people, you know, you get, you tell them to run one mile, but, you know, if you tell them to go two, <laughs> they get excited, oh, it's new, oh, I can go one mile, but uh, can you put the extra see see the what made them wise was not that they got they was not they was not simply excited about the 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 oil the first bit of oil they it was that the extra that they took with them it was that it wasn't oh I have enough you know, some people, I got enough. I got enough word. I got, I got enough. I got enough. I, I just got enough. You know, they wasn't simply satisfied with what the enough. They understood that that extra, you know, the extra is what can keep you. The extra, like if, if you was going on vacation and, and you just took enough, what happens if you get stuck? You get stuck at the light. You get stuck, you get stuck somewhere, you know. But if you had that extra reserve tank, you know, you you okay. You hit E, you like I got an extra reserve that I, I'm gonna be okay. You can rest when you know you got extra. And it stuck out to me because as I laid down to get prepared for this surgery. Right. <laughs> I knew that I had to have extra. I knew I knew I prepared for extra so that if I had to go down for six weeks, <laughs> I could rest. See, when you know that you got an extra dose of Jesus, you got an extra dose of anointing. I ain't going to go there because word has already been preached. But is that extra thing is preparing to go the extra Mile. So I know, yeah. Mile, I know we get excited about new and I know we want to be expecting everything, but are you prepared to go the extra distance? Yeah. So we go to 2024. It's that extra. It's that extra yes. that's going to really carry you when you get tired because yeah. you have the extra breath of life to keep you when you want to. Yeah. When they run out of air, you got an extra dose. So I love y'all so much for that word. I thank God that I was able <laughs> and hearing enough to to hear it <laughs> and mm -hmm. to receive it. So I thank you all. I love you all. Amen. You thank too. you for the prophets. May the Lord bless you abundantly with an extra dose so mm -hmm. that you can prepare for 2024. 
to go the distance. Love you all. Mm. Amen. Mm. Love you too, honey. That's a whole other word. I'm loving that extra. Though. That's a word right there. I know you're going to work that word too. I hope it just marinates in your spirit. You can come back and bless us. Come to up here, Minister Dallas, woman of God. I'm glad that you were able to, to, to jump in here this afternoon. I know it's the first day of your week. I know you'd be doing a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad that I was able to be here too. I caught the end of the word I had intended to be here at one o'clock, but you know, uh, I appreciate um, Elder Jojo who sent me a sent me a reminder. I was like, oh yes, yes, let me jump on. <laughs> um, but it this has been a blessing. Um, God has been setting me up for this. <laughs> been setting me up. And I appreciate the prophetic word uh, confirming some things that have already been going on in my life. And like uh, Minister Leslie says, uh, we get excited about new because number one, we assume new means better. And I know for me, I like I like to look back, not because I just, I like to look at the accomplishments. I like to look at the legacy. I like to look at memories. I like to look at a collection of look at all I have done, right? But what I'm learning even now is as something you said, preparing for the new, preparing, making room for the new also means getting rid of the old, not just the old bad, but the old good, even mm -hmm. the present good. So mm -hmm. that's been happening in my life in several different areas um, and being reminded to look forward with excitement and not i forgot the other word you used but it was like Dread. yes it was like it was like scared and bad <laughs> that's what i remember but and and it's true like god has put some um assignments in front of me and not that's not new right i've always been always been moving um and I'm like, okay, God, how, how am I going to do this next level of obedience? Cause I feel like I don't have capacity, like how I, I don't even know how I'm going to do all this. Um, yeah. And it's scary. So the dread part, um, I've been looking forward, just afraid. And so, um, it was such a good reminder to be like, no, you look <laughs> forward with excitement and you make room for what God has promised to, to be in your life. And so, I appreciate the word and the spanking. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Well, I'm grateful you were able to catch this and and I will have it edited and up on our YouTube page and and I will send it to you once, you know, well, it'll be available. Um, and you'll be able to get right to the the word and, and you'll be able to catch it from the beginning and get all of it in 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 order. So I'm I'm with you though. I'm with you though. <laughs> the space. That's the love of God. We're sons. We are his children. The fact that he speaks to us about the things that matter to him. So <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anybody else want to share anything? Come on through. Come on through. Glory be to God. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, I guess have we heard from I think have we heard from everybody? Well, I know we can't hear from Prophet Markiva. And I don't know if Jerry's Prophet Jerry's even able to speak because he's probably on the road and in one of those zones. Okay. Uh Prophet Kivia, did you come on through, woman of God? Thank you. My tribe <laughs> can't speak, so I gotta come through on this plan. But no, um, bless God, bless all the words that have come forth on today. Um, what I'm grateful for is how you were able to tie everything together and that we know that what has been spoken, we're not off course, we're not off track with any of that, not just within CEK. Um, all the words that have actually went forth today, I've heard it outside of um, our ministry so I thank the Lord for that. So I admonish you all to take heed to the word of the Lord of what has been spoken. Do not take it lightly of what has been said. I know specifically the word of what was given to me. Um, I'm not going to lie. It scared me a bit because it was very critical of how um, God pressed it upon me 
And I know I'm pretty sure it's the same with um, Prophet, uh, Prophet Markeva and Prophet Jerry. So please take heed to the word of what's been given, um, not just for us individually, but collectively as a body, because God has given us a responsibility to go outside. As we know, um, we're not the traditional brick and mortar, but to go out um, to proclaim in the highways and the by byways who Christ is um, and business as usual is over. It wasn't in a sense of God saying, oh, you know, December 31st, now this is over. It's not that. He been, he been meaning this of what has been said. Our ears just have not really been inclined fully to adhere what he's been saying. So please take this word um as a heavy word. I know that I have for myself um, I received the word to myself of what Apostle, um, excuse me, I'm about to call her an Apostle, um, what Prophet Markeva has spoken as well as Prophet Jerry and as well as how Apostle tied it in together for all of us. So we know that new will come. We know that the mm -hmm. anticipation, you know, and expectation of things will come. But with all of that, we do know that the oil is required and the extra mm -hmm. oil, so... We love you guys. Um, and that's that's just it. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Prophet Kivi. I want y'all to understand that I requested them to send those words directly to me. So, you know, they weren't like getting them together and stuff. They sent them directly to me. So I know for them, that was their first time hearing the words from each other as well. Because it's very important to me that they also receive, um, you know what I'm saying? the word so they hear they hear the word um just like the rest of us the only word they knew was the one that is what exactly they submitted to me they didn't know what i was you know how god was going to have me to you know release it so mm -hmm. praise god praise god prophet jerry even um sister regis any anyone else want to share anything before we um come come off i don't know if you're able to speak uh prophet Merkiva. Okay. All right. All right. So listen, listen, listen. Um, again, I'm just honored, grateful um, for each and every one of you, um, you know, for your continued prayer, support, um, fellowship, membership, connection, devotion, dedication. You know, my heart is just is full and, and I'm absolutely humbled by it. Thank you all for being faithful. Yeah, I come on through here. Oh, hello, my Reverend. Dad, my Mark. dad wants to say hi. Good, good afternoon, hello. Reverend. Good afternoon, <laughs> Reverend Moore. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Lord. I'm just know. fine. <laughs> awesome. Were you able to were you able to hear our service today? Yeah, you know. uh, no, I didn't. I'm moving around, <laughs> doing a little bit this, little bit that. Can they get out okay. here and get the rest of these leaves up, you know? Okay. It's, Almost uh, good to see in you. His grace, just basking in his grace. I know that's right. God is so good. Yeah. He's so faithful Amazing. to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you continue to do that. Let him continue to refresh and revive and restore you in his presence, man of God. Amen. Amen. I received that. <laughs> Amen. Glad you're having a happy new year. And may we have you a too. one. And may we have a problem. Amen. We receive it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, she went off mic. I thought she was going to say something. <laughs> oh, I just thank God. Man, I, I tell you, I'm just so amazed how it speaks, how the flow extra with Evangelist Leslie was saying, my God. I mean, but how God tied it all in. Um, my, my God. And just I just thank God for you and your gifts. No one could have articulated it like that. I mean, the way that God gave it to you to put together. I'm, I'm so, so super excited. Um, yeah, I'm so super excited. I'm, I feel like running, running, and, and it's, um, it's going to happen because, yeah. yeah so, it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to hear your voice. 
So listen, uh, for any of you who are uh, listening, um, that if the word has blessed you and you want to put seed in the ground, you want to sow into the word, you want to sow into the ministry. If you're watching on Facebook, it has up there in our comments, uh, I believe it has up there the information for for giving. But if not, you can go to our website, cekministries.com and go ahead and um, put seed in the ground. Um, Pray and talk to God about even, you know, any first fruits offering for this Gregorian calendar uh, new year uh, for what you're expecting in God. Um, Do not shortchange him. Do not shortchange yourself and what he wants to release in your life. And so, um, yeah, you can send send any offering or, you know, you could sow into um, the word directly. If you want to sow it to me, that's that's even available as well. But I just really am always for me personally, I'm always pushing the ministry for. And it's just like, just take care of the ministry. Just take care of what God's given us to do as a body. If you want to sow into the ministry, please do. Please do. I want to go ahead and pray. I want to go ahead and pray us out with, um, you know, just a prayer that kind of just emphasizes and thanks God for the word that he has released over our life. So if you all are in position now and all, as we would say, in the whole, in a, in a, in the old church, you know, of all you know, minds have been fixed and all needs have been met, you know, and all hearts, you know, have been fixed. I can't remember how it goes. <laughs> I just pray that everybody has received what they need. But guess what? If you didn't quite get everything you need, it's okay. The supply house is still open. Heaven is still in business. God is still seated on the throne. Holy Spirit is still moving. So it it doesn't all come from right here. All you got to do is just cry out, Abba, Father, and he will meet you right at your point of need. If it is the Spirit of Christ crying out, Abba, Father, in you, you just can't do it on your own. You got to be, you got to belong to Jesus and he's got to be in you. So let us go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you. (laughs) I thank you for making everything new for us again in 2024. New promotions, new territory, new levels, new mantles, new positions, new documented healings, more miracles, more breakthroughs. Thank you for entrusting us to bring this new wave of your glory into this world. Father, help us, anoint us, guide us, teach us, and keep us in your path and in strict obedience to your will. We thank you in advance for the new strategies for healings and wisdom on how to maintain them. Help us to cultivate the discipline required to partner with your word. We will run to your voice so we may follow the leading of your spirit. Father, release your angels to war in the middle heaven and Clear the spiritual airway so we may hear you without interference, without delay, and without corruption. Thank you, Father God, for perfecting everything that concerns us. Thank you, Father, for warning us that the days of shortchanging you are over. That our level of devotion, our level of faith, our level of honor, our level of service are no longer being accepted. How you are requiring more of us in 2024. You are requiring back from us what you have actually given to us. You are requiring your level of faith, your level of devotion, your level of honor, your level of sacrifice, your level of service. You want us to carry in our vessels your oil only and in abundant supply and proper application. This, you say, is mandatory 
in all things moving forward. We thank you, God, for letting us know. We thank you, God, for warning us. But above all, we thank you, God, for not demanding the impossible from us, but giving us what you require from us. <laughs> you are so good, gracious, and just. You are just. You are the God who freely and generally gives us all things pertaining to life and godliness. This is your reciprocity. You never ask us to give you anything you haven't first given us to give you in the first place. Oh, we thank you in advance for sending your spirit to help us, to fill us, to comfort us in the crushing that is going to be required to produce this extra oil in 2024. We understand the anointing comes from you, God. We understand you are going to provide the anointing, but there's a crushing that we must go through. Hallelujah. For this anointing to be evident and to be attracted to our lives. And I thank you in advance. Oh, for anointing us and comforting us in the crushing required for this oil in 2024. And Father, we thank you for reminding us, just like you reminded us to remember Lot's wife, we thank you for reminding us to remember King Saul and to learn from his leadership mistakes. <laughs> Continue, Father, to develop us in our maturity and character so we will not be blindsided by the trinkets and desire to be loved and accepted by those we are called to lead and mature in their identity in you. In 2024, Father, help us to remember that it is never about us. <laughs> Our confidence in seeing in what we expect from you relies on obediently serving and following you under the authority of the leadership you have given to lead us into the expectation. We want to see and receive the full release from the kingdom of heaven. So thank you, Lord, for bringing us what we need and giving us the faith and strength to go get what it is that we want. Thank you, Father, for faith that works with blindfolds on. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Woo, Lord, be to God. I love y'all. Listen, listen, we be at Restoring Life tonight. I'll be there um, with the, the members and, and a few people from CEK, whoever's going with us. It's at 10 o'clock. Restoring Life is on Brandon, Brandon Boulevard. I can't remember the exact address. I think it's 1076. I can't I think it's Suite 111. I'm not sure. But if you go to restoringlife.com, you look up Restoring Life Church on Brandon Boulevard in Brandon, Florida, you will find it. And um, and I'm looking forward to what the Lord is going to have me do, what he's going to have me speak. But the word is happy renew year. That's the word. Happy renew year. So I love you all. God bless you. And I hope to see you tonight at 10 o'clock. All right. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day and happy renew year. God bless you. Man, hallelujah. Man.